Okay. So I put off this video because it takes a lot of research to figure this one out. How do you get a camp? <laughs> this is actually one of the harder videos that I've had to do because I didn't, I wanted to give a lot of perspectives and there are so many perspectives that I don't even feel like I'm going to cover them all and I don't have that much time. So I'm just going to try my best and I'm not saying this is the end all be all and this is how you figure this out or even that you need one, but I wanted to give some kind of perspective on how you do this and why you might want a camp. Um, so here it is. So do you need a camp? Let's start there because you don't. You really don't need a camp. Um, you could just show up to Burning Man. There are some pluses and negatives of just showing up to Burning Man, um, just, you know, in your car or with your own RV and not having a camp. So what are those? Well, one, you don't have to put in a lot of work. Uh, I mean, you're gonna have to put in work to set yourself up, but once you're set up, you just get to be on your own merry way, spend your time how you wanna spend it, and not have shifts to do work. Um, you can go, you're not on any timeline, you know, you're not having to help the camp build or break down. Um, so there are, so, there are some pluses of not having a camp and you can totally show up without a camp. So I really want to advocate for that, that if that's the thought process you have, totally do that. Show up in your car, show up with your tent, let's go and go to Burning Man by yourself. It doesn't matter. Um, you can just focus on your own journey and there is a lot of specialness if that's a word to that process of being able to just show up and do your own thing you just get to be and the first year you go to burning man that is very important to just be and allow burning man to give to you because i think that's really what the first year is about you don't have to do a billion things and give a billion gifts it should be about really taking what Burning Man can give to you, or at least that's how I feel like it should be your first year. Um, so notice how I say first year, you will go a second year. Well, at least I did, maybe a third, fourth, fifth. Um, it's still super easy to meet people. So don't feel like you have to be in a camp because you wanna meet people. You'll totally meet people the entire time. You can show up to any camp that you want um, for the most part. Um, they're super inviting and everybody just wants to have a good time and is super happy to see you as long as you're not like trying to steal their things, um, you know, stuff like that. You can totally just show up and just be happy and meet people organically and it doesn't have to be about being in a camp. So that will still happen. There are no time limits of coming and going um, because you aren't restricted to this setup, breakdown, you know, schedule that some of the larger camps are probably going to ask you to participate in. Um, so those are all some of the pluses of not having a camp. And like I said, you don't need one, especially if you're gonna go early. Like if you're gonna go right when the gate opens, you might not really need a camp because you'll get a semi good placement. What that means is that Burning Man, like I said in past videos, is six miles. It's large. Imagine being on the very last ring, and that's what happens if you show up late without a camp. <laughs> you're going to be on one of the last rings, and you're going to be biking in to go to all the cool things, um, if that's the kind of person you are. Some people choose to be on those last rings because that's not the kind of person they are. They want a nice place to sleep. They're not about the, the music. They're not about the loud stuff. They just kind of want to enjoy and camp. Um, but if you are a person that really likes all those activities, you might want a better placement so that you're not having to bike so far to even just get to the middle esplanade, which is the middle ring. So what are the minuses of not having a camp? You can't give very big. That's the whole point of camp. So a lot of people would argue that the point of a camp is so that you have better placement, you have amenities, blah, 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 blah. No, the point of camp and having a camp is so that you can give, give huge gifts to Burning Man, to the community. So like the camp I'm in, Trifucta, you have a necklace. 
We are a sound camp, so we give a lot of sound to everybody around us. We have DJs at all hours of the day, you know, spinning, and we also do a lot of talks. Um, we have a playground that we created. We have an art car. So when you have more people together, you know, putting together their resources and their money and their time, you get to give these huge, amazing gifts. And that feels really good too, in a different way than just giving kind of a gift independently because you're doing something together. You're creating a community within a community. So that's, you know, one of those great things is that you get to give bigger when you're a part of a camp than you could independently. And that feels really nice as well. Feels like you're contributing a lot. Um, and it's just you, you know, hatching on and being with all those other people. So you get to give more things. Um, and another plus of that is that you maybe get better placement um, because, and you can show up a little bit later because your camp as a whole, you know, is gonna hold that placement and is vying for certain placements on the playa. So it may be that, you know, you, for whatever reason, can't get there. Like our group, we have a teacher that comes with us. So she can't take off work, you know, and show up on Sunday. She has to go to work on Monday. So we have gone in um, usually on Tuesdays. And if we had gone in on Tuesday without being in a camp, we would have been on one of those very last rings. But because we had our camp, we could show up and we could just kind of go to the front of the line where our camp was. Um, there's a lot of camps, you know, they call them plug and plays. And that's not what our camp is. We have work shifts and we give very much, um, even if we do show up late. But there are camps like that where you can, you know, just pay so that you can have a good placement. Um, I don't recommend that because it doesn't feel good. You know, you're not also giving. Um, so, you know, you, you are expected to have work shifts. You are expected to participate and participate to keep the camp running. So, I mean, it's just like a little town. You've got to do work shifts. What do you think is happening to make all those DJs keep spinning? What do you think is happening when there's a bar that's open 24-7 for everybody on the playa? Well, you have to have bartenders. <laughs> and where do they come from? They come from the people within the camp just volunteering time and setting up their own work shifts and giving in that way. So that's one of those pluses is a better placement. Um, what's another one? Um, you may have amenities because you're in a camp. You may have showers. You may have meals that are set up. Um, you may have fun activities that are built in within your camp. Um, so those are all amazing things that can come along with camps. Um, you may have uh, places to hang out and just be with your camp members that you wouldn't have had if you had just showed up by yourself. So those are all pluses as well. You also, like I said, have a built-in community within the community of Burning Man. So you don't feel alone when you show up. Um, Burning Man can be intimidating as a virgin, um, a virgin burner. So from the very get-go, you already kind of feel like you at least have some people that have your back um, because you have this community within a community. Um, so that can feel, some people need that. Some people can't just show up to an event like that. And if that's someone like you, then maybe you would want a camp if you want that built in so that you have that structure and you have people to rely on that can kind of guide you um, the first time that you go. Um, and yeah, so you may feel a little lost, um, but that's, isn't that what really Burning Man is about? If you don't have a camp, feeling a little lost. Um, so that's, again, you know, maybe a reason why you would want a camp is if you feel like you want some more direction. It was really nice, um, you know, when we had people from our camp that kind of knew what they were doing in regards to music. Um, knowing where certain DJs were going to be at certain times, but that's not really what Burning Man is completely about. It's not a complete music festival by any means, but it was nice to kind of have people that kind of knew maybe what we should go to that night or gave us some suggestions. Doesn't mean you have to take them, but it is nice when you have some guidance. But again, you can get that without having a camp. You just ask people around you, what are you doing tonight? And they can give you some suggestions of maybe where to go or what to see. 
Um, so the next part of my video, after I've explained the pluses, the minuses of having a camp versus not, is how do you find one? And this is why I dreaded making this video because it's difficult and there's a lot of different ways to find one. There's a lot of different ways that, you know, maybe not to find one. Um, and I'm not suggesting this for everybody. Um, this is, again, these are mere suggestions. They may or may not work. Um, and here we go. So one way that you could find one is to just start Facebook adding and Google searching websites for different Burning Man camps. Um, I suggest kind of starting with some of the larger ones. So I'm gonna give you some of the names. This does not mean that they're looking for new members, um, but maybe they are. Some of them do advertise on their website to reach out to them and if you want to camp with them and they kind of explain the process some of them do not um, but it's good because if you start with some of these larger ones and add them on facebook facebook is going to suggest other ones and you can kind of just keep adding and if one strikes your interest as to what they're kind of giving back to burning man as something that you would want to be a part of you can always facebook message and maybe they'll answer and maybe they won't maybe they're looking for people to join or maybe they aren't Maybe if you give a suggestion of something that you could give to the camp or give, you know, in addition to Burning Man, um, monetary or just your personal expertise, maybe they would want you to join um, if you suggest that in a Facebook message. Um, so some of the ones that I've found on Facebook are like Opulent Temple, Uligan Alley, Camp Question Mark, District, Camp Walter, ours, which is Trifucta, Pink Heart, Robot Heart, my personal favorite, Select Garden, and Love Cow. Um, and actually, when I did this, just to see what would happen, I actually had one person message me from one of these camps, I'm not going to say which one, to ask me if I wanted to join their camp. Um, because I'm within the healing arts industry. So it kind of worked. <laughs> and I wasn't even trying to do it. I just wanted to really help everybody else. So, you know, just by even adding people on Facebook, they're also looking at you and seeing if maybe they want to ask you to be a part of their camp. And how nice of that, that they just messaged me today and asked if I wanted to be in their camp. Um, and it's another way to even create more connections. So, you know, I told them I'm already in a camp, but that I'm totally into like doing something with their camp and you broaden, you know, your Burning Man group and community even more. It was so amazing, but that's what I'm saying. So something like that you could do. You can join Facebook groups related to Burning Man, um, even just putting Burning Man as a group. There's a group on Facebook or LA Burners or San Francisco Burners or whatever you want, LA Burners Classifieds. There's a lot of different groups. Join them, ask to join them. And then, you know, when it gets closer, put up a post saying that you're looking for a camp, you wanna join a camp. How, you know, is anybody looking to start a camp? Does anybody have a camp that's looking for members? Maybe tell them what you could possibly, you know, gift or help them with or what your expertise is or what you're looking for. And people will message back, usually. I've watched it happen last year when, some, when a few people have asked, like, how do you join a camp? Um, so that's another way to, like, find a camp and participate and find something very easily. You can join local Burning Man organizations just off of burningman.org. Just go on there. There's a whole local area that you can go and click on to. It sends you to those local websites. You can sign up for their stuff. You can message them. You can see when they have events going on near you or in the area and go to those events and talk to people and say that you want to camp. And this is what your, you know, you want from the camp and what you want to give to the camp. And that's another way to find one. 
You can look up in the archives section on Burning Man from past Burning Mans for different camps. There's so many of them, but you can search around. You can click on them, see what they're about, what their gift is to Burning Man, see if it's something that interests you, and then try to do some Facebook or Google searching to see if you can find them. Um, because usually if it is a community or a camp, they need to be talking to their members in some way, shape, or form. So they'll usually have something like that set up. Um, and that way you can message, you know, the um, orchestrator of it and see if they would be interested in having more members. You can message on Burning Man forums that are actually on that particular website, um, talking about camps or even saying that you want to put a camp together yourself, which is another option. You can search for friends on Facebook, so putting up even just a message that you're going to Burning Man, you're looking for a camp, is anybody of your friends on Facebook also a burner? Are they a part of a camp? Would they be willing to sponsor you? Because um, that's how some camps work. They work where an individual needs to sponsor a new member so that they're weeding out and making sure that people are actually going to give rather than uh, plug and play um, with the camp. So they want to make sure that you're actually going to do that rather than just kind of show up and be happy that you got placement and run off and not participate at all. Um, you can you can go to Burning Man and then maybe attend a talk when you're there. Um, that's how one person said that they found a camp was that they went to Burning Man alone and then they went to a talk and they started talking to people in that camp and that's how they found their camp. So that could be something that you decide to do your first year is kind of spend some time seeing maybe if you want to go back talking to different camps and seeing who you click with. And like I said, you could create your own camp. This isn't like you, I mean, it's not rocket science. I mean, obviously the very large camps, there's a little bit more rocket science going on of how to make that work, especially if they're a nonprofit. Um, but if it's a small camp, create your own. Get a few friends, get some RVs together, and you've got yourself your own camp. Make yourself your own name. Um, and you're already a camp. You're, you're already participating and figuring out how to give as a group together. Um, one individual, when I wrote this uh, on, a, on a message board, said that they found their, their group on Reddit. So that's also an option, you know. <laughs> um, attending Burning Man events in your area, like I said, anything that's going on that's Burning Man related, just go to them, start talking to people, start making connections, seeing if they're in a camp and need extra members and how that works. Attending other music festivals that are somewhat Burning Man related. Even if they're not Burning Man related, you might find some burners, but more of the outdoor music festivals or art festivals um, that are somewhat loosely associated with the theories and the um, principles of Burning Man, you can find like-minded individuals that also are attending Burning Man, like um, uh, Lightning in a Bottle, Utopia, Electric Forest, um, things like that, ones that are outside, uh, more related to camping and have music involved. Um, those are good places to start asking around. Did you, are you a burner? Are you going this year? Are you in a camp? Blah, 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 blah. Create connections that way. Um, you can go to places like, I mean, this is if you're in LA, but you could go to places like flea markets or Venice Beach or places where burners are very much welcome and appreciated and start talking to people at events um, within those areas and asking them if they're in camps. You can go to bicycling events. A lot of events, uh, this is West Coast related, but there's a lot of night rides that take place um, around Los Angeles um, with individuals that are burners and not burners who dress up their bikes with all the lights and go on night rides um, with music attached to their bikes. But there are quite a few burners that do that, and it's a good way to also meet fellow burners and question them about their camps. You can look up art cars on Google and try to see which camps own those art cars and then message those camps. 
Um, so, I mean, the larger the art car, the more likely that it's from a large camp that has a lot of members and maybe wants to add more or incorporate more members. So that's another way. Um, attending Burning Man meetups on the app Meetup. You can download that and see where those are taking place. And again, just go to any of those or going to newbie orientations. So there's a lot of newbie orientations that take place. I suggest these anyways, um, if you're a newbie and you're in an area where they're taking place. They usually happen in um, June, July, and August. So it's a little bit later in the game, uh, but it is a uh, time to, one, get questions answered that maybe I'm not answering for you about Burning Man as a newbie. Um, but also seeing if you can find some like-minded people to create a camp or talking to people that, you know, are there just because they're burners and want to help and talking with them about being in a camp. So that's a lot. Um, there is one more suggestion when I asked this to some people was just even Craigslist. Somebody said they found their camp on Craigslist. So it's a wide it's, I've given you a lot of examples. I've given you a lot of ways that you could po possibly, you know, find a camp. And like I said, this is not the end-all be-all. And I also said you do not need to be in a camp to go to Burning Man. This is all personal choice, and there are pluses and minuses to any situation. Um, so it's just what you want and what feels comfortable for you. And there is no right or wrong answer. Each one, like I said, has great things and maybe some not great things, um, but I hope that this helps you. This was a little bit of a harder video for me to make, um, but I think that means that I uh, am giving back to y'all in a bigger way than the other videos, because this one's a little bit more mysterious than the other ones. Okay, um, well, I will see you next time for another video of how to get to Burning Man. Have a good night.